obviously um, seen the deteriorating uh, situation in the Ukraine. We spoke to the UNHCR um, earlier this week about just how bad it is. It's as bad as it's been reporting, if not worse. Um, obviously, the conditions in and around the neighbouring countries um, for those who are displaced um, is tough. So that's where the support has been asked for. Um, so we stand ready for, in terms of refugees, and that, but they haven't come to an ask yet. So when they come through uh, with an official ask in terms of the UNHCR, we will. Yeah. Um, but uh, as you mentioned, for those Ukrainian families here in New Zealand, um, we'll be considering that uh, early next week. Because I've been speaking to a family, they uh, a Ukrainian woman who's a Kiwi citizen. She's flown to Poland in the hope of finding her parents have mm. you know, been displaced by the war. They've had to, had to flee it. When she gets there, she won't know what to do. Can she bring them back? Well, as I say, early next week, uh, the, the Cabinet will look into those situations about how we can further help, especially uh, the likes of Ukrainian families here who want to bring parents back. Obviously, we've taken the measures to um, extend visas for those temporary visa holders who are here, mm. dependents um, and partners of Ukrainians who are citizens and residents here in New Zealand uh, obviously um, are able to come across in the border exception, I think, for Ukrainians who have um, visas, visas is, yeah. is helpful as well. Um, the outstanding issue, obviously, uh, is the decision we'll take uh, early next week. Right. Um, but it, it's clear that um, the situation is deteriorating exponentially by the day. Um, Why isn't that already well, in place? Well, well it's not. Um, Why not? Uh, well, the, the border complications don't help at the moment. Uh, and usually in these situations, uh, we, we, we take in refugees. But, there's, um, but, but there isn't anything in place at the moment, which is why we're considering it at the moment. But the governments in the past have done this, haven't they? Like, in, say, for Bosnia or Kosovo. Or... Yeah, and, and in the past, cabinet yeah. has made, uh, previous cabinets have made decisions about what kind of special direction or special visa yeah. um, can be uh, afforded to the given situation. And as I say, um, we'll be taking that into consideration. Every so so to get into New Zealand on humanitarian grounds when there's a war in your country, Country. What do I have to do? For wider families, um, that's when the, the government has to make a, a decision in these uh, situations to whether or not it, it extends uh, the visa settings that it has. We're going through that uh, process as we speak and hopefully we'll have a decision uh, early next week. Um, so to those families, and we've engaged with many of them, the, uh, uh, the officials at Immigration have certainly done that. Um, because we'll you're getting representations to your office. Oh, look, okay, absolutely. Um, uh, you know, we've seen them in the media. I've seen some pretty um, emotional pleas um, in the inbox uh, as well. We know something needs to be done. That's why we're taking it into so consideration. Can you, can you guarantee those families that you'll have some sort of decision look, next week we're, on whether we're, there will be uh, look, a pathway to get into New Zealand? Look, as I've said, there's going to be a consideration of that early next week. Uh, I think they can probably take that as a signal. Great. All right, we'll take that as a yes. Um, but then again, um, two million refugees so far in this war. And I mean, you did mention that, and you haven't been asked yet by the United Nations yeah. High Commission for Refugees. It's still early, very early days. Sure, in the war it is. Yeah. But if they do ask, what will you say? We've step, stepped up there in the past. Um, we have increased our refugee quota from 750 to 1,500 uh, to be able to in increase our, uh, our capacity to do more in these situations. Um, uh, we reached out to the UNHCR earlier this week. Um, they say the biggest priority at the moment as people are fleeing Ukraine into the neighbouring countries is to make sure that those neighbouring countries actually have the support to be able to help those people as they arrive at the border. Uh, and uh, as time goes, um, and we all want this to be resolved as quickly as possible, but um, things are obviously escalating. Um, as they develop how they deal with the people who are leaving, uh, if there's an ask and we're expecting one, uh, we'll step up. OK, let's talk about uh, another portfolio, the broadcasting announcement this week, so the new public media entity, the merger. So uh, Television New Zealand and, and Radio New Zealand will become subsidiaries of this new public media entity eventually, won't they? So what's wrong with the way that they're operating now? Well, they've actually done an extremely good job over the last uh, uh, you know, decades. Mm. Um, the problem is the future. Um, if you see uh, the audiences and the way that they're changing, the way that they're consuming their media, um, some important audiences, I think, in New Zealand um, uh, aren't using public media. Right. And I think, that, you know, if those audiences are changing, so does our public media. So you talk about those audiences that aren't being reached by our public media. What are those audiences? Look, if you look at the News and On Air research, um, where, are the, where are the audiences? Mm. Um, it, it is the likes of Māori and Pacifica, um, other ethnic communities, who are using online platforms as opposed to traditional radio and television, where the predominance of public media is, is at the moment, uh, to access their content. Right. Now, I think, um, you know, as well as those audiences and younger audiences who are uh, kind of accessing more on demand, I think it's really important um, that the kind of public media 
type of content is reaching them as well. Why and I don't think our current setup, and certainly our legislation, um, is set up for radio and television. Right. Now, um, you know, and I know, that uh, audiences are changing, the way that our kids and young people are changing the way that they um, uh, access content, so we've got to change with it. OK, but if you say that, you know, RNZ and TVNZ have been doing very well in the last decade, is this particular part of the audience worth throwing it all up in the air and bringing it back down in the new public media entity. No, because we've got, to, we've, we've got to make sure that, uh, that public media, um, and we've been served extremely well by those two entities, is fit for the future, for everyone. Um, there's been a, there is a huge reliance uh, from New Zealanders uh, on public media in terms of the strength of the content, um, the local content, the trust in the news and current affairs, mm. uh, that, you know, if something happens, that they, they will trust it. Um, so I think to make sure we are future-proofing public media, not just the entities, uh, for the future as audiences change, um, as platforms uh, are, are much more freer to be available as um, platforms to use for media, um, then I think that's what we need to make sure that we set this thing up for. So if you're going to future-proof a public media entity, does that mean that it's going to make it harder for the commercial sort of competition? I mean, is the budget going to be so big for this new entity that the commercial competition's not going to be able to uh, have as big a slice of the pie? Look, this thing is going to have a very strong public media mandate. I think some of the criticism uh, in the past, uh, especially about um, Television New Zealand, is that um, while it was state-owned, it had a very strong commercial focus, certainly from the representation from the company that you you're part of and its predecessor, they certainly spoke to government about that. I think what you um, uh, need to see as part of the new uh, uh, driver behind, one of the new drivers behind the new entity, is that it has to work uh, uh, alongside or collaborate uh, in places where it thinks that that's going to work. But also when, when it does things, it has to be wider, um, and mindful of the wider media market to ensure um, th that it's healthy. If I took a, a trip back about two years, um, as COVID hit, um, you know, the plurality in New Zealand's media market um, could have taken quite a big tumble and that was quite a scary thing for a government to contemplate. Sure. So I think we want to make sure that for content reasons and local content reasons we have a strong public media um, media entity, yep. but also for the health of the wider market that it, we can work with But just on well. that point, a variety of media outlets, you know, a variety of the audiences being served. Your own research that you commissioned said that um, is currently well served by a plurality of media. So why change it? I mean, that research was given to you at the end of last year. Yep, and we want to make sure that we keep it. Uh, and I think one of the things in the past, or one of the criticisms in the past, is that um, public media has been in direct competition and therefore um, puts um, other commercial media... Um, uh, entities. So we're talking um, about TVNZ there, right? Well, uh, certainly that's um, some of the messages that, that we got from um, the senior leadership of MediaWorks at the time. Yes. It's like, you know, we're, we're finding it hard to make a buck if uh, if this is the way it's going to be. So TVNZ will be less competitive under this new model? Well, the media entity uh, will have to be mindful of the wider media market when, it's done, when it does things. It'll have crown revenue, yeah. it'll continue to have commercial revenue, but it, when it does things, it's not just about itself and the local content and, and the diverse audiences we want to make sure it reaches, but also it's got to be um, mindful of what impact that's going to have on the wider market because we need to maintain that plurality. We've got a, we've got a small country, mm. uh, five million people. If we lose the much capacity out of our media market, I don't think that's a good thing uh, for both the democracy and the content as okay. well. What, what international model are you basing this on? Is it no, like it's, it's, it's not. We, we, we've done a lot of work to make sure that we get this right for New Zealand. Right. Um, you know, so you're not there's, saying you're not lifting a model from the ABC or the CBC or, or RTE. No, Ireland. no, we've gone away and done the work. Um, you know, some people have criticised us for how long this has taken, but we, we, we wanted to make sure we go away and do the work and build this thing for New Zealand. It's about local audiences yeah. and local content, uh, and making sure we get it right for us. Um, no one else is going to tell our stories, and we think that's important to make sure that public media in the future, when you know uh, audiences uh, are, are accessing their content in a different way, need to see that content. We've seen throughout the pandemic like a deep sense of mistrust of media, and particularly media funded by the government. I mean, is this going to exacerbate that because it's seen that there's going to be a bigger public media entity? Look, I, I think um, some in politics um, and some who have got a a beef with the kind of current situation at the moment have been pushing that. Uh, but that doesn't change the fundamental challenge. Um, in early 2020, um, we, we, we floated it, this uh, as an in-principle decision. We went away and did the work because there are real challenges there. Uh, and we need to make sure that trust in the wider media is there. And I think we've, I think the, the public um, do trust our media. It was extremely important in the very early stages of uh, the COVID outbreak. But we've got to make sure that we strengthen that 
uh, long term as well. Are, are you fighting the right battle here? Isn't it the bigger threat really the, the Facebook and the Googles? Well, Shouldn't uh, that be the work? Well, there's, there's more than one challenge. Okay. Uh, you know, I think making sure that we look after um, our, our own entities and make sure that public media is strong in the future has obviously been the big project. Um, you know, uh, there, there, there's, an, there's an issue with the other platforms at the moment that has been long standing. I won't say too much because there's some Commerce Commission <laughs> action that could possibly happen there in terms of some of the dealings that they are, some of our media companies are having with the likes of uh, Google and Facebook. But that's one of the enduring Can you challenges. Can on that? Well, obviously, some of them want to um, bargain collectively with some of those platforms, and the Commerce Commission will make its own mind up about whether they, they will let that happen. But, you know, the, the revenue issues um, around advertising have been long standing issues, issues that have frustrated um, uh, traditional media companies for some time, um, and, and that is an issue that still That's needs to be worked through. Okay, let's move on to another big portfolio for you, and this includes hate speech, right? So, I mean, last year you told this program that you'd hope the laws would be before Parliament by early this year, where are they up to? Um, well, we haven't developed them that quickly. I think, um, uh, as you would have seen uh, from uh, the public reaction to that, I think it showed us that much more care needed to be taken um, to make sure that, um, you know, I think the intent uh, is genuine to make sure that those laws land in the right place. But we also don't want to inflame the very issue that we're trying to uh, to fix here. Because Tuesday is going to mark three years since the Christchurch attacks and, you know, hate speech was a key Legislative, yeah, component of the, the, of, the, of the Royal Commission. And so there's a big time lag there and we're expecting it. So. Yeah, look, and I want to make sure we get that right. Okay. I think one of, the, one of the things that came out of a concern of the reaction to, to us undertaking that work or starting that work is we think it actually kind of whipped up the, the very thing we were trying to prevent. Was well, that what we saw out in the front of Parliament? You know, I, I mean, because how could that was, like, that was a lot of everything. Yeah, um, but could hate speech laws there have, have you know, sort of dampened that kind of reaction? Could they have affected that? No, because I think that was a collection of uh, a whole lot of different things happening at, at the front. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are laws already in place um, that can take care of some of the things that were being uh, said out there. Um, you know, and, uh, and I think uh, in amongst all of that may have been some of that, um, but I think that was uh, that was a collection of people who are obviously expressing their, their right to protest. Some of the language out there was, uh, you know, insightful, and so that would be hate speech, right? Well, it, it would depend. Well, it's uh, like, and, you know, and, hang and, them and, high was chalked and, in the forward. And as I say, the, the regime is not in place, and I'm not going to get myself into a situation where we were uh, in the previous Nation interview where you start nickel and diming everything. It's important that those uh, that, that stream of work continues mm. um, because so, of the commitment that we made at the Royal Commission, but I'm not about to go and do that and start ins uh, inflaming the very situation we're trying right. to prevent. So you don't want to nickel and dime, I understand that, but we are waiting for this. It's been, I, I don't know, how long since you brought that discussion paper out? We, we, we need some more clarification on the hate speech laws. When are we going to see them? Look, um, we're still working on it. and There are options about how we might be able to deal with that in the future to take, um, I think, some of the public heat out of that, and we're working through that at the moment. You've got three really busy portfolios, but I would say to you that you've been keeping quite a low profile in the last year. Um, are you enjoying your job? Oh, look, absolutely. It's a privilege. I've come from being a... A journalist in this place, to being an MP in this place, to being a Minister of the Crown. I'm busy, I want to get on with it because I want to get things done. Um, you know, uh, people have criticised me that, uh, you know, you might not be doing as many media, media interviews. I've got a job to do um, and I've got to deliver and uh, I think I'm uh, making sure I get on with things. Will you be standing in 2023? Oh, look, that's a decision that I haven't made yet uh, and it's a decision um, that, I, that I will take, um, taking into account uh, this place and the place that I love, uh, home as well. So I'm loving my job now and I think it's, you know, to all the criticism out there, it's a job I've just got to get on with.